26, and a decision is going to be coming out. If you know in advance like we do, what will be announced after... My ninja, they're speaking a lot of wash, man. Don't believe in the hype, man. You're being invited to watch a free video report where you'll be shown exactly what is happening on January 26th was well, don't ever go to your male lecturer's office alone. I think you. Okay. It's as if almost everybody in Nigeria and Ghana knew somebody who's been sexually harassed by a lecturer. Nobody wants to listen. Nobody wants to believe victim. It is crazy. I know a lot of people have been abused, and nobody is trying to do anything. For the past year. I've been working with BBC Africa Eye to build a team of female investigators. For the first time ever, we planted journalists posing as students inside our top universities, the University of Lagos and the University of Ghana, to secretly record men who sexually harass and abuse your sisters, your friends, your daughters. A lecturer who said that if you don't speak with me, I will not give you my who are you? You'll be shocked by what you'll see. Professors, senior lecturers, grooming and seducing students. How many guys have today? How many guys? Somebody's trying to pressurize for sex in exchange for max. It is a criminal offense. My name is Kiki Modi. Lecturers who harass their students. I want you to know. Africa Rai has been watching. Abuse of trust, verbal harassment. We all hear about it. And joining us in this conversation is Professor Olara Wadu Fakbomo at Lagos State University. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So, as a head of a university, how severe would you say the problem of lecturers sexually harassing students is? The challenge is much more than what we are treating at the moment. Okay. Which is why all of us must be on the alert. And all of us must take it very seriously. Alright. Okay. Well, if you, if you want to take some, this issue seriously, I was sexually harassed. That's some serious allegation, man, my ninja. Like, you're trying to do so something about your life, and you know what I mean? But anyway, let's dive into the video. Harassed by a lecturer at university. It's been happening across West Africa for decades. So, we are dealing with an epidemic here. You know, the thing about sexual harassment, mm. it grooms you. You see that word groom. Groom, you're not in a positive sense. They take time to pick your picking. Mm. You know, and then wait for access and opportunity to strike. Thank you very much. It is 21 minutes. Academic institutions are meant to educate and protect our girls but have become hunting grounds for the sexual gratification of men entrusted to teach. Our investigation began at the University of Lagos, or Unilag. It's one of the most prestigious in the country. Welcome to the University of Lagos. Welcome to the University of Lagos. Welcome to the University of Lagos, the University of First Choice, and the nation's pride. Everyone wants to get into you know, like some of the most powerful and most influential people in Nigeria went to Unilag. Awazi. By the way, people, don't smoke, smoke kills. I don't know what I'm doing for, but anyway, let's go back to the thing. He's a popular radio host in Nigeria and a former Unilag student. Like 
many young women who study here. She says she was sexually harassed by a lecturer. One minute you're there, an innocent undergrad just trying to pursue an education or whatever. The next minute, a lecturer is asking you out on dates. My lecturer asked me out on a date. Why? Yeah, and I was, what, 16? What? Yes. I've worked with a couple of NGOs over the years, and the severity of this is crazy. It's just been so normalized. Let's bear in mind that the age of consent in Lagos is 18. People get into uni 16, 17, some people if they're really smart, some people 15. That makes them incredibly vulnerable to predators. Everything just is set up against you. For more than a year, myself and an Africa Eye team have investigated sexual harassment by Unilag lecturers. We interviewed dozens of current and former students. We had eyes everywhere. To protect our sources and our undercover operatives, we designed these masks to disguise their identities when appearing on camera. We're taking a lot of risks shooting this film and a lot of the ladies that we're going to be speaking to, they want their identities hidden, of course. These masks, I want it to represent strength. I want it to represent power. One name kept coming up in our research. A senior lecturer in Unilag's Faculty of Arts, a former sub-dean, and the head pastor of a local branch of the Foursquare Gospel Church. His name is Dr. Boniface Igbenu. Several current and former students claim they had been abused or harassed by Dr. Boniface. Two of them agreed to speak to us on camera on the condition we hide their faces and their voices. He's a respected lecturer He's risen to be one of the top guys in the department. And so he comes across as a father figure that wants to protect you and help you through your journey in school while he has ulterior motives. He always seemed really friendly, but eventually I could notice how vindictive he could be. Okay. He comes to you and tells you he's a pastor, so you don't even see the danger in him. The what kind of things? He would tell you to come to his office. He would lock the door. Sometimes he would want to group you. Sometimes he would want to dry hump you. He likes to pick on struggling students because he knows that they are very vulnerable and there is nothing they can do. I will try not to aggravate him because anything can happen. I will beg. I was usually kneeling down. I will just beg him and say, please, sir, please, sir. So, you're doing well, okay? You're doing so well. He doesn't have that power over you anymore. Do you want to support him? Sexual harassment is actually a naked abuse of power. Sorry, sorry, my people. It's kind of because the power relation is not balanced. Somebody has all the power, the other person has little or no power. Unilag only published a robust sexual harassment policy in August 2019 after years of delays. It bans lecturers from a wide range of inappropriate behaviors, from making suggestive compliments to grooming. To sexual contact. They are not supposed to be predators, haunting those young ladies or destroying their destinies. And you know that the funny fact is they know who they're abusing, right? They're abusing the right person. 
because they're vulnerable, they don't have enough creativity, you know what I'm saying? Like the family can create a uh, solid evidence, build a solid evidence and credibility. We need to start be accountable for what we do and what we teach to our kids. Let's go back. To expose Dr. Boniface, we needed someone smart. Someone who can convincingly pretend to be someone she is not. We call her Kemi. I'm an angry Nigerian. A woman who is angry about the level of sexual violence against women, especially in universities. It's something that has become so normalized. Imagine how insane that is. And I really wanted to do something about it. First approaching Dr. Boniface at his church, Kemi posed as a secondary school graduate, the daughter of a widowed mother who wanted admission to Unilag to study in his department. She also pretended to be 17 years old, under the legal age of sexual consent in Lagos. Two days after making contact, Dr. Boniface invited her to his Unilag office for a tutorial. At all times, our undercover operatives carried a panic button. Hi. Justin. Yes, I can hear you. If secretly activated, the rest of our team who were hiding nearby would be alerted and come to the rescue. So sit down. How old are you? 17. I look very big like this. And minutes into our conversation, this doctor had complimented me five times about being a beautiful girl. Oh, you're beautiful girl, you're beautiful, you're very beautiful. You're beautiful. Don't you know you're a beautiful girl? Do you know that? Eh? You have a beautiful, we are very beautiful, you are a very beautiful girl. I could tell that the way he was talking to me was not normal. You know I'm a pastor, you know I'm a pastor. I know. Do you know and I'm in my 50s? Okay. What shocked you is that even at my age now, yeah. if I want a girl of your age, I'm too young. Yeah. Well, I miss this with the younger Really? I can get any 17 year old girl I want. I just have to give her money. In my mind, I'm like, hold on, did I just hear this man right? And then Dr. Boniface promised Kemi admission to Unilag if she passed her exams. Pass your job. I'll give you admission. I see. I'm an associate professor in French. Then he invited me to his church. I attended. And after some days, he invited me back to his office. He more or less picked off from where he left off the last time. Hey. You look like an angel. Even though I wanted to talk about admission, he basically forced me to engage in this weird prayer with him. The, the weirdest prayer I have ever seen in my life. So the prayer just went on and on and on. Lord Jesus Christ. His legs wide open, jiggling his groin, you know, with this very uncomfortable grin on his face. Come up on me as I said, Lord Jesus Christ. That's my personal lesson. That's my personal lesson. My eyes were never closed during that prayer. My eyes were wide open because I was uncomfortable. I didn't know what was going to happen. After he shook my hand and welcomed me into the kingdom of God, it felt like I had been accepted into his secret world. What do you mean by knowing me? And he began to show a deep interest in my sex life. Why do you want to know? 
my baby, you're my daughter. Look, anything that we discuss, we are sure that your mother will not hear. Okay. I think they asked for the children. Okay. recognize what Dr. Boniface is doing. I know what it feels like to be groomed by a university lecturer. Growing up, I always wanted to end up being a doctor. Uh, my mom used to call me her doctor, her little doctor. I was so fascinated about this stuff. I was definitely passionate then. I was <laughs> so naive. Becoming a doctor meant even more to me after I lost my dad from appendicitis in 2002. At 19, I got into one of the best universities in Nigeria. So, my matriculation pictures. I was a happy girl, just floating through life. My dad would have been really proud and really excited to see me matriculate. I probably would have been embarrassed because he would follow me everywhere and give me hugs and kisses. Yeah, that's he used to embarrass me a lot. University was nothing like I imagined. A lecturer began to target me. For two semesters, he withheld my exam results and pretended I never sat the papers. When I asked him to explain why, he repeatedly demanded to have sex with me. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that. And as a result, right, my results suffered. I never felt so, never ever imagined that I would be a victim. I, unprovoked, I didn't do anything. forced me to drop out of university. I had nobody to turn to, no future, no money. It almost destroyed me. There are predators everywhere in the universities. It kills me that there are thousands of other girls that are going through exactly, you know, different variations of what I went through. I really want those lecturers to get justice, what they deserve. Sexual predators in university are not just my country's problem. Of all the universities in West Africa, the University of Ghana in Accra is one of the most impressive. Its huge campus has produced some of the greatest minds in Ghana. Presidents have studied here. But beneath this grandeur, sexual abuse lurks here too. Let me, let me see if you still have like another one. And women are now taking matters into their own hands. Okay, so I'm the lecturer. I call you. Come. Hey, put this thing for me. Hey. <laughs> Harassment here is said to be so bad, an NGO run by former students offers free self-defense classes, role-playing attacks by lecturers and other predators. How severe would you say this is? Very severe. Very severe. I would say severe because when you have somebody in a place of power or somebody who can help you in a certain way, I think that it's very difficult for you to reject um, you know, a person like that. And if your degree is on the line, I do think that you would do anything for that. We're not going to keep quiet.
fight anymore because that's what perpetrators actually bank on. They rely on your silence. silence. Yeah. Africa Eye sent a team to investigate sexual harassment inside the University of Ghana, finding evidence some lecturers pressure their students for sex. Several stories involved a lecturer in the College of Education, Dr. Paul Kwame Butako. Our undercover operative, Zara, posed as a final year student interested in a master's degree and national service opportunities in his faculty. <laughs> This was only the second time Dr. Butaku had invited her to meet with him in private. What I noticed was in our interactions, he would be very blunt on the phone, very professional. But anytime I went to see him in his office, he would be extremely inappropriate with me. How many guys have today? Uh, How many guys today? I told him relationships were a distraction if you're in school. And he said he wouldn't be a distraction because he was going to be a side guy. Let me be a side boy, a side guy. A side guy. Oh. A side, as he put it, is he would be, he basically wanted to be my boyfriend, but not the main person. University policy forbids lecturers having sexual relationships with students when they are in a position to influence the education. Or career, flirtatious behavior is considered misconduct. I have to say something, bro. My guy say, my ninja say, side ninja. <laughs> my ninja say, a side ninja. I'll be your side ninja. Man, he's with a lot of young ninjas around them. Even though he didn't explicitly say that the condition for me advancing my career was for me to be in a relationship with him or for him to be my side, he kind of hinted that it would benefit me in a certain way in my career. No distractions, they also cause you to be on your career. Then they said, you see how best you can also contribute to your career and make you to be a better person. At this level, at this age, you have so many other people who can contribute to your career. He has made it seem as if you have a choice, but really, you don't. Because he is in a place of power. That's really the essence of manipulation. To make it seem like the decision is in your hands, but really it's not. During these conversations, Dr. Butako offered a national service work placement in his department to Zara, despite telling her the deadline for applications had passed. Dr. Butako vehemently denies any amorous behavior with Zara or with any University of Ghana student, saying he follows all university sexual harassment and misconduct rules. He says no formal harassment complaints have ever been lodged against him. He told us he never made inappropriate gestures or verbal comments, had no intentions of dating her or circumvent. Wow, with all this evidence on video, my guy is still denying. This guy is like, this ninja is the next ninja. I never see a ninja like this guy, man. This is like another kind of ninja. Well, yeah, let's get into that. Don't just get distracted in that. University process to secure a national service placement for Zara in return for sex and had absolutely nothing to do with her future academic progression or career options. Comments about Zara being a side chick and him being her side guy, coupled with telling her she was beautiful, were harmless and a joke, he says. Said without ill will or sexual motive and could not be construed to mean he wanted sex. All the lecturers in the University of Ghana, one stands out for his power and influence. Political scientist 
and outspoken commentator, Professor Ransford Jambo. He enjoys a great reputation as a teacher among his students. But he's also been at the center of allegations of sexual harassment. We sent an undercover journalist known as Abigail to meet him. Posing as a University of Ghana student from a poor background, she attended one of Jampo's classes. He agreed to become her mentor. She wrote him essays to review, visited his office three times, and he gave her good feedback on her academic work. So the German situation academic freedom. So Google what we mean by academic freedom in the first place. Not everything felt normal. Professor Jampo wanted her to wear high heels in his office. And then, one Sunday afternoon, Abigail received a strange phone call from him. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. He began to tease her and accuse her of always being formal around him. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Don't you talk about work, work, nothing else. It's sabo denji. Abigail tried her best not to upset Jampo, who became increasingly personal and said he wanted to come over to her house. Who is not married and doesn't want the decent lady who is also caring? Who of them want? She reminded him she was a student and told him she wasn't interested in a relationship. Well, right now, that's why I'm not really interested. Mm. Mm. But Professor Jampo ignored this. Oh, prepare your mind to us and we are becoming very soon. Eventually, Abigail managed to persuade him to meet in a public place, a mall, instead of her home later that evening. We knew we would have to be cautious. Long before Abigail met Professor Jampo, we interviewed a number of his former students who alleged they had been sexually harassed by him. One of them, who we shall call Na, agreed to anonymously speak to us on okay, camera. So, yeah, Na told us she was sexually harassed twice by Jampo. She alleges the second incident took place when she went to confront him about the first harassment. I felt it was my responsibility to let him know that what he did wasn't okay with me. So I went to him. He apologized and he tried to console me. And in consoling me, he attempted touching me. I was dumbfounded. I just couldn't believe that. A moment ago, he was apologizing, and the next moment, he was on top of me, trying to touch my breast, hold me, that kind of things. She says her encounters with the professor and a past history of other abuse have left her traumatized. It's difficult, and till today, I can't sleep with my lights. Yo, my ninjas. I'm going to have to finish the video here. So if you want to watch the video, you can go there and subscribe to the channel on BBC African Eye Documentary. Like, I've been watching the documentary for a little, for a little while and then that. So now I'm starting to do like a little, you know what I'm saying, um, reaction to it. Well, without further ado, um, if you like the video, like, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to comment again. Don't forget to subscribe because this as your ninja make you, you know what I'm saying? So without further ado, enjoy your day. Take care.